In the next few videos, I'm going to be looking at some of the factors that affect the acceleration of an object. So what we're going to be doing is using this trolley over here. And what we can do is we can cause this trolley to accelerate by applying a force to it. And the force is going to be applied by this mass, which is going to be overhanging the end of the bench. So I have a piece of string that's connected from the trolley. Um, it can go over a pulley over the edge of the bench. And this just reduces the friction as that string is overhanging the end. And then what we can do is we can use different masses attached to the mass hanger to affect the size of the force. And what we're going to be doing in this first experiment is we're going to be looking at the relationship between the force applied and the acceleration. And we're going to be doing that by keeping the mass the same. Now that's slightly different to the second experiment I'm going to be doing, where we're going to have a different mass, but the same force being applied. But I'll cover that in another video. Uh, the other thing I have here, because we're going to have these things actually hitting the ground, is I have some foam. Uh, and I'm going to, just going to put this on the floor down here. And that stops this mass um, becoming e even more damaged or actually uh, causing any damage to anything else. So this is the setup. So in terms of recording the force applied, that's relatively straightforward because if we know the mass, we can multiply it by the gravitational field strength to get the weight and therefore the force applied. But in terms of uh, actually working out the acceleration, for this practical, the setup I have is that this cart is actually acting as our data logger. And it's connected via Bluetooth to my phone. And then what this is going to do is directly give me the maximum acceleration of this cart as it's moving along the desk. So we can read off the value for the acceleration, we can calculate the size of the force, and then we can look at how these two variables are dependent on one another. Now it's really important with this experiment that we keep the mass constant. And we're going to be doing that by attaching other masses on top of the trolley. Because what's accelerating isn't just the falling mass, it's also the trolley which is going to be accelerating across the table. And this is the thing that's being accelerated, this total mass. Now that's really important. And we can keep that constant by keeping these masses here on the trolley when they're not being used, and then we transfer them onto the falling mass. Now what that means is we are changing the force that's being applied to this trolley, but the total mass stays the same, because all we're really doing is taking a mass from here and we're just putting it onto there. So the total mass stays the same, we're changing the force, and that's really important. Now um, the first value we're going to take is when we have a force of zero newtons. Okay, so I'm just going to put this mass on top of the trolley, like so. And with the data logger, this is going to give us the reading for the maximum acceleration. So I'm going to press start. And I suppose that should really be zero, shouldn't it? So let me just zero that number. So yeah, the first reading when we've got no resultant force is zero meters per second squared. That's kind of what we'd expect. There's no resultant force, there's no acceleration. So I'm going to stop that reading. So we've now zeroed it as well. I'm now going to hang this 100 grams over the end of the bench, okay? And the important thing here is that we're only going to be recording the acceleration as that mass is falling. At the moment, this is the highest point where it's near the table, and if I just push this or let it go to about here, this is the point where the mass is now on the floor. So basically, this is the length of the experiment that we're going to be using. So it's gonna pull this back very slowly until the mass is at the top, I'm going to press start. So that's our first reading. With 100 grams, which is about one Newton, we've got a value for the acceleration of one meter per second squared. So I'm now going to take this mass. I'm going to take one of these, and I'm going to put it on there. So we now have 200 grams overhanging the edge of the bench. I'm going to put this back to here. I'm going to line it up. I'm going to press start. And we've got point 0.2, which might be an anomaly. So I might do that one again. OK, that looks more like it. 2.0 metres per second squared. I'm going to do the same for 300. 
that one gave a value of 3.0 meters per second squared. Data is looking pretty good so far, so we're now going to do it for 400, 500 and 600. And how about that? Uh, a pretty good set of data actually. So with that last one, we had 600 grams and we got six meters per second squared. I think there's a pretty strong uh, correlation between these two sets of data. So what we can now do is we can plot this on the graph and look at the relationship between the acceleration and the force applied when we have a constant mass.